at the age of 45, I find myself uh, increasingly saying things like, um, the more I get to know women, uh, the more I learn about them, the less I understand them. That's not necessarily a bad thing, in my opinion. It's just, I suppose, an admission that one comes to uh, after a couple of decades, if not three decades, of interacting with women on a more or less uh, sexual uh, or adult level. I'm 45, and I just uh, recently, in the last few years, have more or less given up trying to figure out women. They'll fascinate me and attract me uh, for the rest of my days, but I've sort of um, come to the conclusion that they're going to be a mystery forever. Um, sort of concurrent with that is uh, the fact that I've finally, at the age of 45, gotten married. Um, I wonder if the two are related somehow. I've never been married. I don't have any kids. Well, I'm married now, and uh, my new wife is already talking about kids, I suppose, as women will. Um, but um, I, uh, as anyone who watches my videos will, uh, will uh, know, I travel a lot. I travel to the point where I've more or less canceled any sort of social life that I've got in my own country. But that's more than compensated for by a very active social life in other countries. Um, I've traveled a lot uh, to places, uh, South America, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is kind of a favorite. And one of the things that one often sees, especially in South America and Southeast Asia, is couples consisting of um, average Joe white guys or average Joe European looking guys and very attractive, much younger, um, local women. Now, it took me a very long time to come to any sort of accommodation with that. I went through this almost puritanical becoming a human uh, process, whereby when I first encountered this kind of thing, a lot of people first see it when they, say, take a vacation in Thailand um, or Mexico. Uh, you see uh, this, you see this um, rather unexceptional uh, white guy with a very good-looking young woman, and you're sort of morally affronted by this. You sort of say, oh, have you no shame, buddy? Obviously, she she doesn't see anything in you, and, uh, and uh, she just wants something from you. And here you are um, using that, more or less, as leverage to get yourself uh, a woman that you don't really, uh, that you wouldn't really merit in um, any sort of equal uh, relationship between men and women. Now, there's a great deal of that, let's be honest. Um, especially if you say go to Thailand um, or Colombia, there's a huge amount of sex tourism in these places, and there's uh, also a huge amount of gold digging of local women willing to uh, sucker uh, the impressionable uh, uh, white tourist. But if you spend enough time there, and you eventually um, sort of grasp the, the the mindset, maybe you don't understand it, but you grasp the mindset of these other cultures. And you meet obviously happy couples. Um, you, your, your sense of moral superiority starts to weaken. You sort of think, okay, this is kind of dumb. After a while, that uh, just for the sense of feeling morally superior, I'm refusing to enjoy that which is obviously available for me. And this is coupled with the realization that it is entirely possible that that gorgeous young woman. Uh, that the uh, that the white guy has on his arm may be considered by one of the local people uh, to be a thoroughly ordinary looking woman, nothing exceptional, whereas the nothing exceptional male might be considered very attractive by the local women. It might be genuine. And again, while while there's a huge amount of of, uh, of, of abuse taking place. Eventually, you, you grasp the fact, you do start to realize that the, the attraction is mutual and genuine in a large number of cases. So the inevitable happened. Once I grasped that this had happened, I um, eventually formed a relationship with a woman that I'd known actually for quite a while um, prior to actually it blossoming into a romance. And I think that what prevented it from happening was me keeping my guard up and keeping my moral uh, superiority, which is kind of hypocritical because... Behind that moral superiority was a willingness to have plenty of holiday flings with local women, which in a way is kind of objectifying women. But I, um, I guess being a male, I, uh, I have a normal libido, and it sometimes gets a hold of me.
uh, or it did. Now that I'm married, I've got to watch it, of course. But the whole thing illustrates something that really fascinates me, and that's the difference between men and women in terms of what attracts the one to the other. What attracts a man to a, wom to a woman is often quite obvious and straightforward. Um, when you're young, it's uh, more or less completely physical, and you can't really help it because your body is working in a certain way. Um, your, screen your body is screaming for sex more or less all the time, and to the point where you don't really enjoy it. And I, I'm glad that I'm not like that anymore. I'm 45, but I still remember what it was like when I was 20, say. And you're so obsessed with the idea that it's very unpleasant, and it leads you to doing some pretty hurtful things to women. But as you get older, you're more interested in temperament, um, in personality, in things like this, uh, to form a, a, a relationship with a woman. Uh, that's very important. Um, but for a woman to be attracted to a man, that's going to be a mystery uh, forever, what, what, it, what it is that makes a woman attractive to a man. There's so many celebrities out there that one sees, say John Gandolfini, that are known as kind of, in a way, uh, woman magnets, uh, even Woody Allen in his day. Um, that you wouldn't really think would be even remotely attractive. But again, what attracts women, and, and this varies with each individual woman, I think women are a lot more individual uh, in, in matters uh, of this nature, uh, than men are, and it's mysterious to me, and it always will be mysterious. And I think it may even be mysterious to women. Women will often say, well, I don't know what it is, but he's got something, you know, that uh, really has a pull on me. Whereas men rarely say this, men are men sort of understand what it is that uh, attracts them to a woman, um, and uh, this is something that that actually uh, concurrent with my realization that there's an, a huge gap between the two, uh, sexually as well as you allude in your video got that funk, um, that actually has finally uh, got me I think to settle down and start to live a normal domestic life. Uh, the fact that I've finally given up trying to figure it all out. It is a mystery, but it's a pleasant mystery. And uh, if both of us benefit from it, who am I to stand in the way of a little bit more harmony in this world? Time will tell whether or not I've made the right decision, but it certainly feels that way. We shall see. Um, but the gigantic chasm in terms of mentalities, in terms of sexual identity, in terms of uh, um, sexual experience, um, is something that really well and truly fascinates me. I can sort of get into the headspace of other cultures, and I love doing that, but I think the headspace of a woman will forever be a mystery to me, but certainly a pleasant mystery. Thank you.